here's a question, uh, again, from the Western standpoint, why belief in re reincarnation? Why not the belief that, you know, when you die, you die, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. When you die, you go to heaven. What is the origin of this belief and why is it compelling to you? Well, uh, the why question is not answered by any religion because it's how question. It's how it works. But why is creation like it is? Why is there creation at all? Why not have one anymore? Or why not have different laws of physics? We don't know. We have to admit we don't know. Because you could construct a universe with different laws of physics. You could simulate, like in science fiction movies, to simulate. You could make up an imagined universe and say, well, why are I outsmarting God? I'm giving a better deal, a better universe. Why didn't God choose that? We don't know. That we don't know. So reincarnation is not a why, but a how. It, it functions this way. And it's a way for individual uh, beings that are really nothing but the one being. Uh, to express themselves freely and face the consequences of their, the results of their own choices that they've made. And this means, the, the issue I'm highlighting is the effect this has, this belief system has, this reincarnation as a claim, uh, the effect it has on race and bloodlines and an ancestry and history. Uh, one of the concepts that I have developed is called history centrism. History centrism is an obsession with history and creating a sense of historical identity based on one's ancestry and collective destiny of people, certain people. Then there is a lot of fight because then, you know, I, I claim from my ancestors that the history was X and we are the privileged people, you claim something else. I claim based on history that you guys, your ancestors did something to us and we have to take revenge on you or we are the victims or you claim the opposite. So once we are in bondage to history as our identity of who we really are, we are in an irreconcilable situation because you cannot change that history. Since you cannot change what happened, so, and I cannot change what happened, uh, we are burdened with that history. So there's an internal momentum to it. To, yeah. That we're almost, uh, we fate ourselves in a sense to doing certain things. Yes. By virtue of the history and the lessons that we learn from Yes. It. And the historical conflicts are irreconcilable. So uh, how do you, so this, this system that Hindus have is not burdened by history because the purpose of the, the, the nature of the self is not limited by the trajectory of that lineage of history. Mm -hmm. So you are Jewish only in this life. You were in your previous life made Muslim probably. You might have been a Hindu, you might have been an atheist, you might have been all the different kind of races around. So you might be very proud of all their ancestors. Because you may have had that experience. And in your next life, you're not going to necessarily be born again as a Jew. You could be born in any tradition. So it frees you from the burden of history. So I'm curious though, you, you describe in a way reincarnation as just kind of a phenomenon that exists. Mm -hmm. In addition to your background in Hinduism, in addition to your upbringing, why do you find that vision compelling? Well, I think there is a, it, it's more scientific if you believe the justice and causation. It, it, is, it is more scientific to say that a kid who is born blind, uh, it's not because of some either injustice or some coincidence. Because one of the questions that I think the Abrahamic religions have not addressed too much is inequalities at birth. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a question of discussed a whole lot. So there aren't even very many theories. It's just left to, I've asked a lot of theologians, and they usually, you know, digress from the issue. Whereas in Hinduism it says you're accountable for every situation you're born into. You are accountable. Now the issue is, if my dad's DNA uh, makes me a certain way, yes. uh, isn't, it the, isn't it the dad who's influencing me? Right? The dad who looks like it. The Hindu response would be that Rajiv's own karma deserved a certain dad who would give him the features consistent with his karma. So the kid born in Bill Day's house was, on account of their own karma, going to have a certain life beginning. And therefore there's a match between that soul and Bill Gates, who needs a child. So that soul is born in Bill Gates' house and not some other soul. Whereas another person, because of their karma, the fit, the karmic fit, is with a poor homeless person. So, it, I have circumstances that resemble my dad and it would incorrectly seem like my dad caused my circumstances, but actually I caused my circumstances. 
and I therefore got this debt. So you can never blame your parents. You can never you can never say that this is my parents' fault that they had this that that situation for me because it is your own karma that gave you those parents. Isn't there a problem that it potentially causes though, in so far as um, almost blaming the victim? So from my standpoint, theologically and whatnot, the your birth is out of your control. It's something independent of you. You could call it random. You could call it just something that happens. And as a result, when I see a poor person. I find myself obligated to help them mm -hmm. because it's not as though they brought it upon themselves. It was by chance mm -hmm. that they had to Good that point. they were in that circumstance. Yes. Does this justify almost a, a social Darwinism no. or something? No. Uh, let me address two issues here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second issue I'll address is what's the basis for ethics, morality, compassion mm -hmm. in this system, which I'll come to. It's a very important issue, and that has to do with I see in you the same Brahman expressing as expressing through me. Mm -hmm. And therefore is my empathy. And therefore when you are suffering or hurt, I am not helping the Joshua, I am helping Brahman as Joshua. So Rajiv, Brahman as Rajiv what is helping Brahman as Joshua. That's the basis of our connection and our link. And, but let me come to that in a moment. First thing is, uh, isn't there a sense of kind of fatalism, victimhood, uh, you know, that that's what I was born in. That can happen. But that is an incorrect interpretation, incorrect way of looking at it. It's, it's exactly like if a person is, uh, you know, kicked out of a job because they were found drunk at work and they threw him out. Now he could say that, you know, I don't want the system of accountability because that makes me look like a victim. But the point is, he, he has to be accountable. So karma says that you should not. You should, it is not coincidental. It is not your circumstances are, are the way they are because you caused them. And the, the original cause may have happened way back in the past that you don't remember, but you did cause it. And the other person, you should never be jealous that why did this guy win the lottery and why is that guy, you know, uh, in living in such a great, uh, you know, dynasty of kings or whatever, and I'm a poor soul. Because everyone is getting ultimately what they deserve. So it also increases your accountability and your, you are, when, if you are informed by this karmic philosophy, you are more con concerned and more careful about your choices being made now because you're going to, uh, you're going to have the consequences there. And even if you're about to die, even if somebody's got a gun on their head and they're going to blow you up, a last minute thought, a last minute compassion, a last minute gesture is not a waste. Is, it, there is nothing you do which is wasted in this system because everything you do is always going to be there, included. So how does that work though? Okay, who does the accounting? Um, so it's a just system. It presupposes a just universe wherein all of your actions directly determine where you'll be in the next, in your next lifetime. Mm -hmm. Who makes that determination? Okay. So this is an interesting point. It's like asking, a similar question would be how, who keeps track of the electron making sure it's moving the correct way? Mm. It just exists. And this is called rhythm, which means the, the word rhythm means patterns of the nature of reality. So it is, it is the nature of existence to, uh, even before there is, even before you come to physics of inanimate matter, be, beneath that is rhythm. Rhythm is the, the uh, nature of reality so deep that these principles are like the deepest laws of, that govern reality. And the dharma, of, uh, the dharma is actually everybody, everything has a dharma. Electron has a dharma. Uh, electron doesn't have a religion, so this is one of the differences between dharma and religion. And dharma, tree has a dharma to behave a certain way, grow a certain way. The clouds have a dharma that they, you know, they become dense and they have rain. Electron has a dharma that based on the intensity of the electrical field, it can move a certain way. So in any things, not having free will, not having choice, just move by the virtue of their dharma and the dharma of inanimate things is what we call physics. So that's how a Hindu would look at physics. And the, those that have evolved to a state of consciousness that they can make free choices, their dharma is now their right, righteousness, their, their choice, because their dharma becomes a matter of their own free will. But even those that don't have free will are mechanical devices moving around, you know, the, there is no karma for them, they are just doing this because this is the way they are built to do. So, so everything in the cosmos has a dharma and has, has some principles that it's following. 
So karma is just a deep, it's like gravitation, who keeps track of it? It's just the nature of things. Oh, interesting. And not in an ideal form. What came to mind for me was, is dharma the platonic form of the tree or the electron? And karma is the accounting of how well you did based on kind of the dharmic norm set. But it sounds like that's not no, quite... It is right. actually existence. Because since Brahman became the world, there is no separate Brahman who is looking down with binoculars and saying, okay, now Rajiv, you, you, I'm going to give you so many points and so that. The accounting system is not separate from the system itself. Just like the electrons, uh, electrons uh, property to move a certain way is just built into the electron. It is just, it is just a point particle, but that's what it is. Yeah. And that's a fascinating thing. So, th so this means that, that the, the one Brahman is everywhere, is, in a, is as every electron. And therefore, since Brahman ha is the electron, therefore that manifestation is part of the way the electron behaves. So it's a big organism mm. that has many component parts in a sense. And each part is really a reflection of the same one, uh, reflected to seem like separate parts. So the separateness of this electron and that electron is illusory. And the separateness of Joshua from Brahman as being a separate soul is illusory. Mm. And so the purpose of evolution of consciousness and the purpose of uh, liberation is to for Joshua as X to understand that he's Joshua as X. He's not just X as X. Mm -hmm. And the human condition, which causes what we call bad things and evil things and problems, is is that Rajiv has stopped. Has, is not aware every moment that it's Brahman as Rajiv. He thinks he's Rajiv, just by Rajiv himself, and he thinks that he's this isolated atomic being, and he goes through life trying to get the best of others and he goes through life accumulating and avoiding things. And all that karma keeps building up in his, in his account and it just goes on and on. So his way out of this is a state of consciousness where he begins to have a direct realization that this is Brahman as X. So I'm gonna, it's not that I'm going to run away and stop being Rajiv, but I will now be more conscious as I'm being Rajiv. I'll still respect the relationships I have, I'll still respect all the duties I have to perform, as Rajiv, mundane as they may be, uh, I still drive my car and I still go pay my taxes and do all those things. But I'm not going to be limiting my experience as this physical body called Rajiv.